In 1986, Transformers was at the height of its popularity. Everybody wanted the toys, and it had even spawned a feature-length movie, which did some interesting things with characters. It killed off a lot of the characters people already had toys of, including Optimus Prime. It introduced characters that we wouldn't get a toy of for 20 to 30 years, and introduced a lot of minor characters that we in the UK never knew toys existed of. However, with the recent drop of Hasbro's War for Cybertron Kingdom and Studio Series 86, it looks like all things Transformers the movie are going to be making their way into plastic, including this guy. Greetings fans, hyper fans, and people just lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. Today we are looking at Transformers Earthrise Alicom. Now that's kind of a weird name for this guy because I always thought that that was the type of Transformer he was rather than the name. I mean, we got the Sharktacons and this guy was called Gnor. So these guys don't deserve a name? But that's what it says on the box, so that's what we have to work with. He is a humanoid alligator hybrid monster thing and he appears in Transformers the movie as the heavy muscle of the Quintessons. A little bit smarter than the Sharktacons, they're basically the sergeants of the Quintesson army. I'm not usually keen on Monster Bots but I picked him up because again I'm a big fan of the 86 movie and he was probably the last thing I needed to round the line out. He comes packaged in robot mode, which we will get back to in a second. But I just want to start with this, because this is kind of how we see them most in the movie. He has very little head articulation other than the jaw action. Nothing sort of left, right, up or down. No, nope, absolutely nothing other than that jaw. He comes with a spear, and like all monster and beast formers, you can pull his tail off and use it as a sword. He is a very chunky figure and he reminds me a lot more of the Cyberverse style stuff as opposed to what we call Chug. His articulation is kind of limited, head moves not at all, the arms have got a single swivel point and the legs are a ball joint and a hinge and a hinge at the front for the toes. And apart from the tail being able to move a little bit, if you've got the sword in, that's it. He is basically there to stand in the background guarding whatever figures you are putting on trial for their crimes against the Quintessons. So, what better opportunity than to do some size comparison? Um, here is the Classics Hot Rod because Ponton hasn't sent me a new one yet. And he, he's really stubby. In Alicon mode he is, because he's supposed to be this hunched over, um, yeah, about two thirds the size of a Classics Deluxe. Let me bring in Starstream, who towers over him even further. These are going to be absolutely dwarfed by the 86 Rodimus and Cup, but for a Chub collection, they're supposed to be intimidating in numbers rather than in size, and they still come up a decent size above the Sharktacons, both in Shark mode and in Human mode. So we're going to call that forgivable for now. If we actually just look at these two, it should be really displayed together. We can see that they do have a lot of similar design cues. The sculpting on the arms, the spikes, the curves of the legs, all make it thematically very tight. And even when we get into robot mode, the transformation is really simple because we are literally taking his tail, flipping it over, and then unplugging the arms and straightening everything else out. He has a little flap over his abdomen, which you have to get out of the way while you turn the legs around and straighten those out. But yeah, once everything is clipped back in place, we have a very short and squat figure. who is pretty much as ugly as the alligator version. Uh, if I grab my two bots for size comparison again, you will see that again, he, he is a stubby little so-and-so. Definitely has a bit more chunk to him, but yeah, he's diminutive. He's still 
scales very well with Gnaw. Still takes a lot of same design cues, including the angle of that fin. The Quintesson national dress of having useless arms hanging off of you. And in robot mode, his articulation doesn't really get that much better. The legs are pretty much identical. The arms do have a turn at the elbow. And arms will come out maybe to about 50 degrees and the arms have a 90 degree bend. The hands swivel 180 and are absolutely hollow underneath. The head um, can look a little bit left and right, can look up and down, is on a ball joint, but is so hindered by the armor around the neck that all well, of that's pretty much useless. There have previously been third party Alicons that are now going for, well, significantly less than they were, but still pretty high. But I think this is the first time that Hasbro has actually brought this character into plastic. On the plus side, that means we finally get the character. On the negative side, it kind of feels like they've put in less effort because they know that people are going to buy it to tick off that collection. He's currently about £17, but I do hope that I can find a second one on sale because I'd like two of these on my shelves, but I'm not going to spend a full price on a pair. I mean, the Sharks comes, I got my first one at full price and then managed to get a few knockoffs and unboxed ones and things to make up my pack. And they are characters that can be army built, but there's probably more from this wave that you'd want to pick up before looking at two or three of these. Um, just for more size comparison, here he is next to SRC Legend Hero Zero One Quintesson, which I reviewed, wow, seven years ago now. And to me, this is a better scale than the new Hasbro Voyager Judge, because if you've got something that's Voyager size, why does he need this? army of ugly looking fish bots looking after them. There is an alternate version of him known as the Bailiff which comes in in a very cool looking deluxe box set if you can get hold of it. But today picking up this figure he's a good solid reputation of the character, plenty of paint apps. Considering this is the first time we've seen him in plastic he's probably not a bad thing for you to pick up. If you have found this video useful, you know where the subscribe button is, you know where the bell is. If there's anything that I have missed, got glaringly wrong, or you want to add anything to the discourse, you know where the comments are, and until next time, if you're keeping the mint in package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector.